Next, Peter Abbott, the title Wellbeing, Keeping Mentally Healthy. Hello everybody. Um, it's been a long day, hasn't it? You've been getting lots of information and things. So I hope you found it all very useful. Uh, my name is Peter Abbott. Uh, I'm going to be talking to you for about the next 25 minutes or so, getting it towards 5 o'clock. Uh, and then we'll be wrapping things up. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, well-being uh, and mental health and how that can link. And I'm going to talk about maybe supplying you some ideas, uh, some options that you can consider uh, when you're thinking about supporting your mental health. I know that um, I was sat in on the last two speakers um, and what they were talking about and uh, Leanne was talking about the feedback she just got from her uh, uh, research that she's undertaken and in, built in that was some of these concerns about mental health and are they looking after their well-being and are they reaching out for support when it's needed and it comes across to everybody really in life when it comes to this thing called mental health. And today we're going to talk about um, trying to keep um, an eye out essentially for positive moments because we do have them, there is a positivity that happens on a day by day basis but sometimes we can get so weighed down by what's going on on a day by day basis maybe thinking about what's going on or has gone on in the past what potentially might be coming up in the future and we simply forget to live the here and now so a little bit about that background of who I am so I'm an accredited instructor for Mental Health First Aid Union I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that organisation um, and we deliver courses out to the community, whether that's to the public or if it's into organisations. Um, and one of those courses is Mental Health First Aid. And we're starting to see now a huge demand for this type of training when it comes to it. Because this is understanding now in 2022, this modern world is hard work. And we really do need to be thinking about our mental health as well as our physical health. But an awful lot of us have never even considered it. It's not something that's come along and come on our horizon uh, unless we've had to think about it. That perhaps, such as what we've been discussing today, there's an acute life event that makes things happen within our lives that suddenly sends us off in a different trajectory to perhaps what we thought we were going to uh, be going along. Further to that, um, I also have mental health diagnosis. So I've got gen uh, generalised anxiety disorder, I have obsessive compulsive disorder, and from time to time I can have a clinical depression, I go to the holy hat trick when I'm going for it. But also it's a little bit about, I hope to bust a few myths as well, because people with mental health diagnosis doesn't necessarily mean they've got poor mental health. In fact the vast majority of people when it comes if they have a decline in their mental health can bring that back up into a positive status and learn the coping mechanisms to not only to be able to check in with themselves so they know where they're at on a day by day basis with their mental health but also be able to consider what might support keeping that mental health in as positive state as we possibly can do. So that's a little bit of background to who I am. So what we're going to have a look at today is um, we're going to just have a quick look at and chat about what this thing is of a positive mental attitude. We're not necessarily going to have this 24-7 well, it's not something necessarily you can switch on and go, yep, yeah, I've got that completely, thank you very much, away I go, all done and dusted, I've learned to do it. Life comes in ebbs and flows, as does the status of our mental health. And it depends what life is throwing at us on a day-by-day -day basis. And with that then, that's going to impact us, and it can impact us from a mental health perspective and from a, a, a physical perspective as well. So when it comes to having a positive mental attitude, it, can, it has to sometimes be an adapt, it needs to be a change within our mindset that we need to consider it and put some work in. It takes work, it takes effort. I spent 30 years denying that there was ever such a thing as for mental health. Absolutely, I had friends, I had family screaming at me to maybe reach out and go and see a professional, I wouldn't do it. I went for unhelpful coping mechanisms. I don't know shame to say it, I went and drank and I went and took drugs and I did all of that because I thought it was me. Because my mindset was at that time that mental health is either you've got good mental health in the psychiatric unit and they've carted you off in the white coats. And then the white coats have come along and I wasn't willing to accept that there might be something in between. So once I reached out and took that acceptance to take that step to go and get some help, it was like light bulbs going off all over. And also what it allowed me to do was reflect on myself so that then in turn I could start living this life day by day and getting on with it and find those coping mechanisms. And the reason I'm telling you that is because it, it, it is hard work. When you're first thinking about getting involved in this, I was typical, 
born in the 60s. So, and back then it was like men don't cry, you push your emotions down, you don't do any of that, you're seen as weak if you do that. And so of course I wasn't emotionally intelligent. I don't recognise or didn't recognise the full range of emotions that we do naturally experience. We do naturally experience sadness, we do naturally experience disappointment, let down, being low. But we should also be naturally experiencing those positive moments as well. And when life and acute life changes come along and swipe the feet from underneath us, it's important to remember that we've got to seek out that balance. We've got to remind ourselves there is that balance there. And this is in essence what we're talking about today. So we're going to look at positive mental attitude. I'm going to look at a thing called the five ways to well-being. And the reason for that is one of those areas is really poignant on what I'm talking about and how we can maybe think of some tips and some supports that hopefully you can take away and you can think about um, putting some of these into practice to be able to give you that more resilience, give you that more of a suit of armour to be able to allow some of these smaller things to bounce off. The bigger things might get through, but you'll recognise it quicker and you'll be able to perhaps do something about it uh, before it impacts too much. We're then going to look at mindfulness and we're going to look about the benefits of living in the present. This is what we're going to talk about. So, five ways to well-being. Yeah, by the back, but five ways to well-being, I'm a bit of a mover around, I don't sound still very much in anxiety disorder. So, um, Connect is one of the areas. Now, it was first set up back in, two, well, launched back in 2008 by an organisation called the New Economics Foundation. And what they did is they did all this global research and pulled it all together and had a look at it and went, okay, then what five areas of our lives do we need to think about investing in, spending some time in it, so that we can get the most out of it? And they came up with these five areas. Now, the first one's about connecting. The second one's giving. I'm going to be talking a little bit in more detail. The third one's keeping learning. The fourth is being active. But the one we're going to concentrate on today is about taking notice. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread them back to the other four to show actually how all of this works together. Now, the first one, connecting. We are social creatures. We wouldn't have evolved into the species we are today on the planet without us working in groups. We're too weak. But when we came together and when we pooled ideas and when we offered each other that support and that comfort and dare I say back, we've been in the caves and we were in there and we've got that safety in numbers and all that, this is that connecting element of it. It's part of our DNA. And as we've got into modern human life, our connections are starting to fragment, as we've got there. So it's about like, you've got to treat it as a cornerstone of your life. And those connections, we were talking about, the last two speakers were talking about that connectivity, that communication, that openness, that being honest with one another. It works really well if you consider it. And you can think about how you go about your day-to-day -day lives and think, do I actually connect as well as I could do? And perhaps I should. And sometimes days can be more difficult to do that than others. Gosh, I know all about that. Yeah, about not wanting to get out of bed and it's, uh, with regards to it. Like, like, I'm a lifelong diagnosis, so in a similar vein, I've got to cope with this for the rest of my life, just to get about my life. And when my mental health is really poor, it's life impactful. Yeah, you go through those periods. So connecting is really important. Think of it as a cornerstone. The next one's about giving, and I'm not talking about going around giving everyone a tenner, but if you all want to come and give me a tenner at some point, that's all very nice. Um, but we're thinking about here about giving, because again, it makes people feel good. You can simply give time. You can smile. We're forgetting to say good morning to neighbours or people down the street anymore. That interaction, feeding back to that connectivity. We're losing that, we're becoming more insular, we're becoming more isolated. And in doing so, that has an impact on us as an individual. So think about those elements of it. It could be giving something back to the community. It could be doing some volunteer work. It could just be giving some the time to listen. And that can be so powerful of something that you can offer to somebody. Your ears to listen, to allow them to speak in an open and honest place <coughs> and trust that they can talk about anything and anything they wish to talk about. So on from that then, keeping learning. This is another thing that's good when it comes to our well-being. Because when we keep learning, we're inquisitive, we're all inquisitive. That's how, again, we've evolved to be the dominant species on the planet, because of our inquisitiveness and our ability to learn and to be able to go about things in a better way, perhaps. Because we learn that element of it. And that's good. 
but we keep doing that because that keeps us going. Again, it can connect back. It's that sense of accomplishment of doing that. Now, we also talked about physical activity and obviously with the condition uh, of EDS uh, um, uh, with regards to that. This could be something that can be quite problematic, but we are designed to move. When it comes to our physical health and it comes to our mental health, we're designed to move. So we were designed to run, we were designed to climb trees, we were designed to hunt, to food gather, all of these things primarily we did. Modern human society now, we don't need to do any of those things because it's all provided to us. So of course when it comes down to uh, physical um, knowledge and about being physically active, we've for a number of decades now been told about it. But when it comes to well-being, and in particular our mental health, there's a reason behind that as well. When we move around, when we get active and we do these types of activities, it releases natural chemicals at once. For example, you've heard of endorphin release. You know when you do exercise? Yeah? When we're not moving as much as we were designed to do, what can happen then is we don't get that right chemical balance released within us. And so things start to get out of kilter. And we start to fall short of certain things that we should be getting natural because that's the natural design of us. We're amazing units when it comes to it and what we're capable of doing and what we are. So again, it's about thinking, okay then, am I connecting? Am I doing that bit of giving? Am I learning something? If you even learn one small thing every day, it's that accomplishment, it's that working the brain what it's supposed to do. Being active. And then let's go on to the last one. And this is about taking notice. Now, taking notice, sometimes people refer to it as mindfulness, sometimes people refer to it about living in the moment. It is essentially that. Now, I'm going to talk a bit more about that, but first I want to consider positive mental attitudes. And as we can see on the screen there, it shows about if we can foster a positive mental attitude, what that will do in turn means we become more optimistic, uh, about situations and then interactions and yourself as an individual. And to foster one of these, having this positive mental attitude. Now, I am not saying that you're going to be able to foster this positive mental attitude and that's it. Switch it on and you're done. No. Life's not like that. But it allows you to have moments where you will perhaps have that positive mental attitude. So we start to create this balance in life when we're thinking about it. So what can happen then is we do try and foster this and adopt it. When we do get into these difficult situations, as it seems there, um, or uh, it, there's those feelings of hopelessness, absolutely they're around. Yeah? By trying to foster and change this mindset when it comes to positive mental health, what you can do then is try and reverse some of this and remain hopeful. Yes, there's been an acute life change that's happened. Absolutely it has. Is it impactful? Absolutely it's impactful. Does that mean I can never have happy moments again? No. Does that mean that, that life is essentially finished and done and dusted now? No. It's not. So it's about adopting that and going, yes, there is change. And change does impact mental health 100%. Yeah, it comes along and it can change it and it starts to push it down. So we can it's fluid. It moves up and down on mental health. Even on a day-by-day -day basis, it'll move up and down. But it's having that understanding that, okay, then let me try and foster this. If it doesn't sometimes work one day, that's okay. There's no fail in that at all. That's just having that understanding, this is modern human life. And then we're going to have to get up the next day and we're going to go, okay, then let's go for it. Let's see how we can get on with it for today. Yeah? And then if we have to reset the following day, then so be it. We reset the following day. Yeah, it's trying to build that resilience within us. Yeah, to try and get as much out of it. So on from this then, mindfulness. Now, I've, been, I've had lots of therapy. I've had one-to-one -one therapy, I've had CBT therapy, I've had group therapy, I've had computer-based therapy, uh, for example, uh, as I've gone through. And uh, I really held back about that because I thought it was all very, in my view again at the time, I thought it was all very Americanized. Oh my God, I'm going to be asked to lay down on the couch and tell me all about your problems and that type of thing. That was one of my stumbling blocks as well. And it's not that other though. But also when I was in one of these uh, uh, sessions one particular time, they asked me to consider mindfulness. And I'll be perfectly honest, at my, that time, I thought mindfulness, right, okay, then this must all be very spiritual, very meditative. Sit with my legs crossed like a Buddha, and I thought this is just isn't for me. 
with an anxiety disorder, I'm never going to be able to sit down long enough to be able to even manage that for five minutes. So I thought, I can't practice mindfulness then. It must be something that I can't do. That's not the case either. Mindfulness, what it is, is a essential, as it says on the screen, living in the moment. And you can be doing anything in that moment, but you are living it, you're experiencing it. And again, it's about shifting your mindset oops, sorry, to where we're at at that moment in time. And it's a basic human uh, ability that we can be present. But when it comes to, again, lives and what's happening and what might be impacting them and the rush of it and the speed of it, we forget to be present. And what can happen is then that the days start rolling into one where we are present sometimes, but it's only the negative stuff that we're remembering. And so we get to the end of the day, and when you get to the end of the day, you go, that was an awful day. However, if you've been trying to practice a bit more mindfulness, a bit more living in that present, you'll probably find, actually, if you were brushing your teeth at night and went, hmm, have a think about three positive things that happened today, you will find them. And again, it starts to shift it then, and it starts to change your mindset to go, it's not all negative. There might be not a lot of positive at this moment in time that I can take notice of, but it's there. And you start to reframe your mind again with your thinking. So um, when we can do that, and when we become living in the present as well, it also means that at times we don't necessarily overact as, as perhaps much we would do, or become as overwhelmed as perhaps as much as we would do because we're seeing things more of a, a balanced situation. Because also another thing when it comes to your mindset, if you're sort of having a, um, a, a situation or going through a moment where your negative health might be just tumbling a bit or you're down there anyway, uh, and thinking about those elements of it, it then becomes that um, your mind frame will change and start to um, react to everything in that way. So rather than factually reacting, you'll start to emotionally react and it will be based on how you're feeling at that moment. So a situation could become negative or feel upsetting or feel in that way, more in part because how you're feeling within in that moment, in that situation. Do you get what I'm thinking here and what I'm saying with regards to it? So let's think about the benefits of living in the present. So what are the benefits of that? You start to appreciate the world around you. You start to appreciate those moments. We've got a gorgeous day outside, but you're feeling you came to go to one place, it's one of the best days in night. <laughs> yeah. We've got outside and like that, going, oh, look at the weather. There's barbecues going on all over the place out there. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, you do appreciate it. It's like, for example, I am laughing about that, but I was sat in the garden before I came down today. So I was going to sit in the sun for an hour. That's all I planned to do. And I did, and I went in such a deep relaxed state, but then I was going, I can smell the barbecues kicking in. I can smell, I can hear the birds, there's some wood pigeons somewhere, I can hear a woodpecker somewhere, and doing that element of it. It's living in the moment, it's appreciating those moments. And like I said, it takes practice, but that's the benefit of it. You start to appreciate those relationships, those connections, those friendships, those family connections and relationships. It becomes more appreciative. It's stress relief as well. I'm not going to go into too much stress, and uh, I don't know if any of you have uh, came onto any of the things I did online. Uh, with Annabelle's as well, but I've spoken about stress before and I'm so passionate about it. I don't want to sort of burst your bubble, you're never going to get rid of stress. It's, it's here. Yeah. It's a natural human response. It's been around for millions and millions and millions of years. Way before dinosaurs. Once upon a time, creatures on this planet used to walk around and go, boop, 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 oh, what's that over there? Go and see another creature and they'll be dead because they have no really warning detection system. And that's where stress comes from. But us as modern humans, we trigger this early warning detection system for almost everything. It could be a thought, running late for a bus. Triggered, why, where's the line? There's nothing chasing you, but that's what that system was designed to do, essentially. So it can help switch that off. And you all know what stress feels like. Some just get that butterfly, some just get irritable, get dry mouth, heart racing, heart rate going up, breathing rate going up becomes overwhelming, yeah? That's the body thinking, what do you want me to do? Where do I need to run from? What do you need me to escape from? What do you need me to fight? 
I think it's fat and anything, I just run late for another four to two months, but you can't distinguish. So you're switching this life and death system on all the time. So it's about finding that stress relief, it's about switching it down and being in the present can make that happen. It can help. Again, as I've said, you might be sat there going, oh, we went back, it's three and a half minutes. Fantastic. It's better than no three and a half minutes, isn't it? You're giving your minds a break, and this is what it's about, mindfulness, and when we're thinking about it. We've got less worrying and overthinking when we can start to practice it. Yeah, because we do overthink. We do worry about things. I call them thought words. Mine mostly come at, at, at night. I'm just about to get into bed, boom, thanks very much. In you go. Starts burrowing down. Now with practice, and uh, as I've said, with my conditions that I have, I've had to practice this just to get about everyday life. So I'll just go, okay, then what, what facts have I got there to back that up? What do I believe that? And if I can't find any, or if I can only find 50% of facts to make that a reality, I'm holding. I'm gonna hold that thought. And that's another thing altogether, but I'm just saying that when this worrying and thing comes on, it's about, okay, it's all right if your mind wanders, if you're trying to live in the moment, no problem. Recognize that your mind has wandered, and if it has, pull it back and start reliving the moment again. If it wanders off again, it doesn't matter. It's the recognizing that's the difference. Yeah, before you've got lost 20, 30 minutes into a thinking process that's causing you upset and being overwhelmed and things such as that and excessive worrying. It's like recognizing when it's happening and can I draw it back? You're never gonna cut it out completely. That's the nature of us. Yeah, it's understanding that when it does happen, though I know it's happening, it's the light bulbs moments going off when it does, when you can recognize that within yourself. And also, we start to be more playful. Now, one of the big beliefs, I do believe we should never lose a child inside. I really don't. Yeah, and you should be able to do that and have that playfulness in life. Have those moments where you do allow yourself to have that playfulness and with regards to it. So on from this then, um, let's think about some top tips. So uh, about living in the moment, how we can practice it. And again, this could be doing that you do. So there's anything that you can do for being mindful. You could be talking to friends. You could be binge watching something on Netflix. You could be um, uh, going out and uh, meeting with friends. You have a meal. You could be doing some exercise if you're, if you're doing that. You could be uh, doing some meditation. You could be doing some artwork. You could play a musical instrument. You could be doing some gardening. You could be cooking something new. Can you see the list? It's exhausting, isn't it? It's whatever you find to do. It could be something as simple as you're washing, you're doing the washing up. If anybody doesn't know all our dishwashers, I like the old uh, washing up, but washing up, live it. When you're washing up, what does the water feel like? What temperature is it? How does it feel on your hands? What's the smell of the washing up liquid that you're using? What are the textures like? The knives, the forks, the plates, the cooking utensils that you use? It sounds daft, doesn't it? But if you actually feel that, you give your mind a break. You might be doing that for three, four, five, ten minutes, or whatever it is, and you're fully absorbed in what you're doing. Similar when we have showers. And you've been watching when when you hot, hot food, you hot food, and when it's going with on the television. Yeah, anybody tried the cold shower yet? <laughs> wow, I did one before I came before. I've done the uh, 20 day challenge on the app, but I don't really see it. But even in things such as that, they will find you that space to have some living in the moment. So whether you choose to be busy in that moment, whether you choose to be uh, doing nothing in that moment, it's about finding those moments because you really do then start to live when you're doing that. So um, also another thing uh, where it's, it's about focusing on what's on uh, right in front of you. You've been doing an awful lot of that today, haven't you? Your mind's been wandering a lot while you've been doing it. You managed to keep 100% concentration while you've been watching all day. Because it's natural for them to wander. Information, topic, whatever it is that might be going on in front of you, the natural curiosity is to make you wander away and think about it, about what's happening, how it, what that means to me, perhaps, whatever topic it was. <laughs> but then that's about pulling it back and going, right, okay, then, yeah, I wandered off, but now I'm going to pull it back, I'm going to concentrate, I'm going to be here on the here and now. The vibe of the present is really useful to do. What's going on around? Because if you're picking up on a vibe, what are you doing? You're taking notice. Yeah? Might not, you might pick up on a vibe you don't like, and you have to go home, I'm not liking your friends today. Don't like that vibe, but it's still being in the notice. I'm making a joke there, but it's still about being in that moment. And if you do that by picking up on the vibe of things, or 
uh, what's going on or the uh, location that you're in and taking notice of what's going on around there. I want to deliver some training to uh, a company and um, the training rooms are over this courtyard and they have the most amazing display, it was September time, of all this bush art and flower. And I was delivering the training and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so envious of where you work because what you can look out on is tremendous and not what you're talking about. And I went, out there. And they all looked up and went, oh my God, that's really nice. But you work here every day. What do you mean? Is that you've just lifted your heads up now. And that's what we do in this modern world with our heads down. We need to pick them up yeah, and have a look at it. Um, and the last one I've put there is about these electronic devices. Yeah? We can't live without them. And they have huge benefits, absolutely. From the uh, perspective of thinking about wellness and thinking about looking after the well-being, there's an amazing set of apps on there as well that can buy into this living in the moment and being present. Anybody at the car? Yeah, Aurora? Yeah, that are on there. There's some great apps to have a nosy app. Just search in the app store, well-being apps, and have a look at them. The, uh, the, Wim, uh, the uh, Wim Hof one, I've had a really decent look at that today, and wow, there's some amazing stuff on there. There's some breathing exercises on there, there's some uh, energy exercises, there's a cold shower stuff as well and challenges and things like that. But there's an awful lot there to have a look at that can accompany this. It's about finding what works for you. But these devices, how many of you sit there and you watch a program perhaps at night, you get to the end of it and you go, I'm not quite sure what that was about. <laughs> yeah? What do you mean? I've sat there for an hour and looked at that and I'm still not quite sure what I'm looking at. And then you were friends and you go, did you watch that program last night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you think? Did you see that bit? What bit? That bit? It's because we're on devices. Because we've got to an age now where we feel we need to be stimulated that much that we can't simply sit and be present and look at it. So we'll pick up a device. Ooh, let's have a look at what's going on with Snapchat. Let's have a look at what's going on in Insta. Tiki Toki. Yeah. Let's have a look at what's going on face, but it's not really called Tiki Toki, I do know. Um, it's <laughs> what's going on, on Facebook, yeah? There's this fear sometimes of missing out, but sometimes we can doom scroll and we need to be mindful of that as well. We look at it and we'll scroll through and then we'll see things that are happening and we'll see things that are going on around the world, for example. And there is an awful lot going on around the world as well, but not only what's going on in our personal lives as well, it all seems pretty negative and it all seems pretty bad. And we'll naturally attach to those. So, or the other end of it is we'll say, oh, all my friends, they've got such a, look at the lifestyles they've got. Good God, mine's awful. And it's not that, because people aren't going to post pictures up where they look awful. Yeah. Where you slept in a skip overnight and then post what a good night out in the night. Yeah. They're not going to post that picture, they're going to post the picture on the way out of how wonderful that life was, not the picture on the way back in reality. So it's all skewed, but we'll get on those platforms and we'll look at it and we sometimes we've got to fail it and fail it and fail it and fail it. So I do really recommend that uh, we sort of have a look at this. Now, um, with regards to this thing, I, I, I purposely put it around about 20 minutes, I'm a little bit short there, but I think I'd like just to open it up. And if you've got any questions you'd ever like to ask about mental health or well-being or what it's like to have a mental health condition or how you live with it or um, who you might reach out to support if you think that you need to when it comes to your mental health. I thought I'd just throw it open um, and see if anybody wants to ask any questions and have that opportunity. Watch this, you'll all go, no. <laughs> and then I'll have to do a tap dance for five minutes to fill in the, the time. No? Any? I can always be around if you want to come and ask me any questions. Do people practice? So let's have a bit of a hands up and a show. Do pe are people aware of wellness? Yeah? Come on, we've got awareness there. Do people um, practice wellness? And be honest, if you do. I want to see the difference in show of hands, yeah? Do people, so those people, well let's think of it from a physical aspect then. So people know about physical health, yeah? And you sort of have an understanding of what you really should be doing to look after it. Not what we do to look after it, but what we think potentially should be doing to look after it. So, Anybody practice looking after their physical health? Go out for walks, maybe go for a run, go to the gyms, doing things. Yeah? Look at the difference in hands. Because we're already educated to it. But we need to get to. So this conversation about mental health and, uh, and talking about this, 
uh, mindfulness and practicing it, five ways to well-being and thinking about it and considering it. As I said earlier on, we need to start shifting our mindset to thinking about our mental health. Now, when we think about our mental health, let me just have this in and I'll, start, I'll wrap it up, but when we think about our physical health, um, we will go through life, but we won't expect to have 100% physical prime fitness as we go through life. We understand that. And we also understand that our physical health can be fluid, particularly with conditions as well. That it can be fluid, and some genes are more challenging than others when it comes from that physical aspect. But we read it, we understand it, we can tap into it. It doesn't take effort, it doesn't take conscious thought. Well, sometimes it might, but in the main, it doesn't take conscious thought to think about it, it's particularly because of fatigue. When it comes to our mental health, it's exactly the same. It will move around. And it's a thing called a continuum, and we can move into different sections of it, but essentially we've got four sections. It will be no mental health diagnosis with good mental health. It will be poor mental health with no diagnosis. It will be poor mental health with a diagnosis, and it will be uh, good mental health with a diagnosis. That's why we sit with our mental health and we'll be in one of those quadrants and we have the ability to move around all of them as we go through life. We won't be static and it will depend on what's happening in our lives at any one point which will influence our mental health and our well-being. So, okay, I'm going to leave you to it uh, and I'm going to shut up and see time-wise. Is that ten past five that we've got on there? Quarter past, I'm so sorry, we really waffled on that and got on with it. I actually thought, I, did, I thought it was 17 minutes, I'm not going to lie. So I was like, oh, God, that 17 minutes is taking forever. <laughs> okay, listen, thank you so much. Uh, have a wonderful evening tonight. Live in the moment for it. Give it a go.